The sun was high in the sky, making the busy gas station very hot all the time. Vuyo, a committed worker, walked quickly from pump to pump, her face shining from both sweat and a constant smile. Even though it was very hot and there were a lot of people, she kept her cool and greeted each one with a kindness that belied how busy the day was. Vuyo's hands moved quickly as he helped a family fill up their van with gas, and then a young woman who was having trouble with the gas pump. As she was finishing, she saw an old guy slowly walking toward the station. His steps were shaky, and his clothes were torn and old. His eyes darted around, and his worn-out face showed a mix of fear and confusion. Excuse me, child, he said, his voice a little shaking. I think I left my wallet at home, and I don't have enough cash to pay for the gas I've already put in Vuyo stopped and looked at him with her eyes. His voice made it clear that he was telling the truth. She could see the worry in his eyes worry that went beyond the current situation and pointed to bigger worries that had been there for a while. She took a step closer, and her face softened. Vuyo said in a soft voice, Don't worry, Baba will make it work she took her own money out of her bag. She smiled as she gave him the exact amount and counted it out. Whenever you get the chance, you can pay me back. As he introduced himself, Baba Thabo looked touched. He took the money with shaking hands and tears in his eyes. With tears in his eyes, he said, Thank you, I'll pay you back in due course. Vuyo nodded, and her eyes showed that she really believed what he said. They had been watching what was going on and started to talk among themselves as Baba Thabo turned to leave. Are you sure? One of them laughed, really, you believe that old man he's probably trying to scam you. Yeah, said someone else with a smile. There are con artists living here all the time, Vuyo. You were just lied to. As Vuyo listened to their insulting statements, her face turned serious for a moment. She took a deep breath and turned to look at her co-workers. She said, I believe in giving people the benefit of the doubt. Not everyone wants to trick you. People need help from time to time. Her co-workers looked at her with doubt and didn't say anything else. Vuyo saw Baba Thabo leave with a little more certainty in his steps. He held out a small piece of paper with his name and address on it as a promise to come back. She was both hopeful and scared because she knew she had done the right thing even though her friends thought it was wrong. The rest of the day was busy and hot, and it went by quickly. With the same level of commitment Vio kept working, but her mind kept going back to the old man. She was interested in his life and the events that had brought him to that point of need. Every customer she helped made her think of the person she had met and the small act of kindness she had done. As the sun went down and long shadows grew across the street, the gas station finally became quiet. Voyo leaned against the counter inside the station for a moment to rest. The cool air was a nice break from the stifling heat outside. The boss, a strict man named Mr. Mbatha, came up to her. In a calm voice he said, Voyo, I heard about what happened today. You stole money from the register, right? Vio stood up, her heart pounding. She looked him in the eye and said, No, mister. Mbatha, I paid for it myself. I thought that man needed help, and I did. Mr. Mbatha sighed and rubbed his forehead. I know you mean well, but there are rules in place for a reason things could get worse if we make excuses. Voyo's eyes got sad. But she stood her ground. She said in a soft voice, I did what I thought was right. Rules need to be broken sometimes for the sake of people he looked at her for a long time and then shook his head. Sorry, Vio. It's already too late. You have been fired. Vio had tears in the corners of her eyes as she put her things together. As she left the gas station, her heart was heavy, but her mind was clear. Even though it cost her her job, she did what she thought was right. As the sun slowly went down, spreading a nice glow over the gas station, the noise and activity slowly died down. The pumps, which used to be crowded, were now only occasionally used, and the hum of engines was replaced by the sound of birds singing. Vuyo wiped her sweaty forehead for a moment to catch her breath. She was deep in thought when Mr. Mbatha, the station manager, spoke up. His sharp voice broke the silence. Vio, may I see you in my office? His tone was neutral, but there was something about it that made Vuyo's heart sink. Vuyo went with him into the back office, which was small and dimly lit. The walls were covered in old posters, and the desk was a mess with stacks of papers. Vuyo was told to sit down by Mr. Mbatha, 
who sat down behind the desk. He put his hands together in front of him and said, I heard about what happened today, really. Did you take money from the slot? Vio shook her head. Her voice was calm but sad. No, mister. Mbatha. I paid for it myself. I thought that man was in need, so I believed him. He said he would pay me when he got back. Mr. Mbatha sighed and leaned back in his chair. Look, we have rules for a reason. If we make an exception, it will become the norm. Some customers may believe they can wait to pay, which could cause us issues. I understand the rules Voyo said, her eyes fixed on the ground. But policies shouldn't always come before people. I couldn't just turn that man away because he was so desperate. The manager's face turned serious. Thank you for your kind words, but we can't just rely on trust, it's already too late. I'm sorry, but I have to let you go. Vio felt like he had been hit in the chest by what he said. She could feel tears coming. But she blinked them back and wouldn't let them fall. She said in a quiet voice, I understand, but I'm not sorry for what I did, Mr. Ambatha, gave a short nod. Be sure to get your things and leave, I'll take care of your last payment. It felt weak under Vio's legs when she stood up. As she gathered her things, her movements were stiff and slow. Some of her co-workers were sad and others were not caring as they watched in silence. When Vio went outside in the evening, the cool air hit her face and mixed with her tears. The streets were lit up with soft dusk light as she walked home. Vuyo sat in the small, cozy living room she shared with her mother Ama and Zuri, Ama's daughter. The simple furniture and decorations showed that the people lived a hard-earned life with few resources. Ama looked up from her knitting because she thought something was wrong. How are you, Vio Vio? Vio took a big breath and her voice became more steady. Today I lost my job, Zuri looked up from her homework at the kitchen table. Her young face was filled with worry. Why Mom Vuyo told them what was going on her voice was calm but sad. She talked about the old man, her choice to help him, and being fired afterward. Ama listened quietly. She looked worried and proud in her eyes at the same time. As Zuri tried to be strong for her mother, tears came to her eyes, but she quickly wiped them away. Ama said in a soft voice, that was nice of you, it costs money to do the right thing sometimes, but you should always be yourself. Vuyo nodded. Her heart was heavy, but her spirit was strong. But Ama kept a calm face even though her eyes were filled with fear. Vuyo, we'll figure it out, that's right, she said. We always do. In the days that followed, there were a lot of small but important problems. In order to pay the bills, Ama had to make the tough choice to sell some of the family's most valuable antiques. She sold a silver brooch that had been in her family for generations and a pretty china tea set. It hurt to do it, but it had to be done. With heavy heart, Vuyo watched as her mother gave the things to a nearby vintage trader. Alma's calm face covered up how painful it was to give up these gifts. With a determined smile, Alma tried to cheer up her daughter by saying, we'll buy them back one day Zuri felt the stress and started to worry about her schoolwork. Zuri asked Vuyo one night as he put her to bed, Mama, will I have to stop going to school? The question hurt Vio's heart. A loose hair fell off Zuri's face, and she gave her a soft kiss. Sweetheart, we'll do everything we can to keep that from happening. Just pay attention to your work, please. Zuri nodded, but her eyes still showed worry. The stress over money wasn't just affecting Vuyo, it was hurting her whole family as well. The house, which used to be full of laughs and fun talks, now resounded with their fears and doubts about the future. Even though things were hard, the family's strength showed in the way they helped each other. Ama kept knitting, making pretty scarves and blankets that she sold at the nearby market. Zuri, who was still young, offered to help out around the house more. She worked hard at cleaning and cooking, which made Vuyo feel good. When Vuyo looked at her mother and daughter at the dinner table one night, she felt a rush of thanks. She spoke with a heavy heart, I'm so proud of both of you. We'll get through this as a team Ama reached across the table and grabbed Vio's hand, she said. We always have, and we always will. Don't forget that it's not about the things we lose, but about how much we love and love each other, the Zuri eagerly nodded. We're stronger together, she said, determination shining on her young face. Vio smiled because he felt hopeful again. She was eager to find another job and support her family, and the problems she faced only made her stronger. 
Every day gave Rio a new sense of purpose, and she started her day by doing the same thing she always did looking at job listings, changing her CV, and writing cover letters. She had a lot of work to do every day. Each email of rejection hurt, but Vuyo wouldn't let them stop her. The lines on her face and the sag in her shoulders showed how tired she was, but her heart was still strong. She was aware that she couldn't give up. Vuyo spent a lot of time at the library studying companies and filling out online applications. She had many interviews, and every time, she wore her best clothes and smiled with hope. Even though she kept getting turned down, she stayed positive and believed that the right chance would come along soon. One afternoon, Vuyo was looking through job postings when he saw one for a gas station worker in a faraway neighborhood. But the job description sounded good, and the station was farther away than she would have liked. The drive would also be long. She took a deep breath and sent in her application, hoping for the best. A few days later, Vuyo got a call from the boss of the gas station asking her to come in for an interview. The voice of the boss was friendly, which gave Vuyo a little hope. She carefully planned for the interview by thinking about what questions might be asked and practicing how to answer them. The weather was bad when the interview day came around. It was cloudy outside, and a cold wind blew through the streets. Vio put on her best coat and left early because she knew the trip would be long. She got on and off of crowded minibuses and walked through wet streets with steady purpose. A middle-aged guy with a friendly smile met her when she finally got to the gas station. He put out his hand and said, You must be Vuyo, I'm Mr. Adebayo, and I'm in charge here. It's great to meet you. It was a strong shake from Vuyo. She answered, Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Adebayo. Her voice was calm, even though her stomach was fluttering with worry. The meeting took place in a small, comfortable room. Mr. Adebayo asked her about her work history and why she wanted the job. Vuyo was honest about her position, how much she loved her family, and how determined she was to work hard. She talked about how eager she was to learn and how hopeful she was. Mr. Adebayo listened carefully and nodded a few times. He said with some thought, You have quite the story. Vuyo, it's clear that you work hard and are dedicated. I like how honest and determined you are. Vuyo had a flash of hope. Say thanks to Mr. Adebayo. I think I can add something useful to your team. After a few more questions, Mr. Adebayo leaned back in his chair and looked at the document with deep thought. Vuyo, I like the way you act. I believe you would do well here. You can have the job if you want it. Vuyo's heart beat faster. Thank you very much, Mr. Adebayo. I won't let you down, she promised, her voice full of thanks. He smiled, Mr. Adebayo. I'm sure you won't tomorrow as the first day of your training. Vuyo, welcome on board. After leaving the gas station, Vuyo felt like he had won. The long drive and bad weather didn't seem important when compared to this new chance. She couldn't wait to tell Ama and Zuri the good news. That night, when Vuyo walked through the door of their simple house, her family was there to meet her. Zuri ran over to Ama as soon as she looked up from her knitting. Mama, how did it go? What is it? Zuri asked, her eyes very excited. Vuyo smiled. I got the job, she said with a voice full of excitement. Ama was very proud of herself. It was a heavy voice that she used to say, I knew you could do it, Vuyo. This is great news. Zuri gave her mom a tight hug. Mama, I'm so proud of you. Vuyo felt hopeful again as she sat down to dinner with Ama and Zuri. It would take a long time to get stable, but she had already taken the first important step. A new beginning for Vuyo was her new job at the gas station far away. It was a chance to start over and show herself again. It was a hard road, but each step brought her closer to a better future for her family. Voyo was eager to make the most of this chance as she took on her new job. Mr. Adebayo, the boss who gave her this chance, greeted her warmly at the start of the first day. He smiled and said, Good morning, Vio. I'm glad you're here. Let's start with the most important things. As he led Vuyo through the station, she looked around and thought about the different jobs she would need to learn. The station wasn't fancy, but it was always busy with people coming and going. She met the team, which was made up of both experienced workers and new hires like her, thanks to Mr. Adebayo. The first few days of her stay were very busy. 
Voyo learned how to open and close the cash register, deal with customer questions, and do basic repairs. Her resolve and desire to learn helped her get through each job, even though they were all hard. Working conditions were hard, and Vuyo was often worn out by the end of her jobs, but she never let her tiredness get to her. The best part of her day became talking to people. Every time they talked, Vio's natural friendliness and kindness came through. She smiled at everyone she met, paid close attention to what they needed, and offered help whenever she could. Her hard work began to pay off over time. On a very busy afternoon, a mother with two young children came up to the desk looking stressed out. Sorry, do you have a bathroom that we can use why she asked, her voice tense with need. Vuyo smiled and pointed behind them. Of course Ma Emmett's almost there. I'll get the key for you. The woman let out a happy sigh. Thank you very much the trip was long. As the woman went to the bathroom, Vio smiled and smiled back with a couple of juice boxes and a small snack for the kids. Okay, kids. While you wait, get something to do. The kids' faces lit up, and their mom replied, her eyes filled with thanks. You save lives, thanks. Customers slowly came to respect and like Vuyo because of small actions like these. At first, her co-workers didn't care about her. But they soon noticed how hard she worked and how kind she was. As they were leaving for the night, one of her co-workers, a young guy called Saifo, came up to her. He said to Vuyo, I've seen how good you are with customers there was some admiration in his words. You make it look easy. But I know it's not Vuyo smiled in a humble way. Thank you. Saifo, I just try to be kind to everyone as I would like to be treated. The whole team slowly came to trust her earnestness and hard work. Vuyo became close with her co-workers by telling them stories during breaks and being there to help them when they needed it. These connections gave us a sense of community that helped us get through the long days. Vuyo's trip to the new gas station had given her life security and meaning. The people who worked with her respected her, and customers liked her work. It took a while but her hard work and drive were beginning to pay off. But the ghost of her past remained and threatened to destroy the peace she had finally found. Vuyo got to the gas station early one morning, ready to start her shift. The mood was happy, and her co-workers were happy to see her. He called her into his office just as she was about to start her work. His face looked serious, and Vuyo felt a knot in her gut. After telling her to sit down, Mr. Adebayo said, Vuyo, I need to talk to you about something and Vuyo's heart was beating fast. Mr. Adebayo, is everything okay? He sighed and rubbed his forehead. I got a call this morning from Mr. Mbatha. Your former boss, his story was that you were fired for lying, and he told me not to keep you on staff. Vuyo's eyes got really big in shock. That's not true. Mr. To help an old man, I paid for it with my own money. If you asked me, I would never lie or steal. He put out his hand to calm her down. Vuyo, I believe you. But these claims are very serious and they are making people in charge doubtful. They are worried about the image of our station. Vuyo felt like her world was falling apart. What can I do to show that I'm not guilty? I feel bad for you, Mr. Adebayo told her. I've seen how hard you work and how dedicated you are. But this isn't just for me. The business is worried about what might happen. They have chosen to suspend you for now until we can figure this out. Vuyo's heart sank. Pause me, but Mr. Adebayo, I care a lot about this job. It's too important for me to lose. He sighed again, and this time Mr. Adebayo's face was filled with sorrow. I'm really sorry, Vio. There's nothing else I can do right now, but I'll do my best to speak up for you. Vuyo felt numb as he left the office. As she grabbed her things and walked out of the gas station, her co-workers looked at her with worry. It felt like a long, lonely trip home, and every step was heavy with sadness. Her new life was falling apart because of an untrue lie. She had worked so hard to make it happen. Vio came home to find Ama and Zuri making lunch in the kitchen. When she walked in, they looked up, and their smiles faded when they saw how she was feeling. How are you, Vio? Ama asked. Her voice full of worry, Vuyo, took a big breath and tried not to cry. Mr. My old boss, Mbatha, called my new boss and told them I was lying. I have been put on hold until they can figure it out. Zuri ran over to her and gave her a tight hug. That's not fair, mom, there was nothing wrong with you. Vuyo gave her daughter another hug and her heart hurt. 
Yes, honey. But sometimes, people hurt others just because they don't like them. Ama stepped forward and put a comforting hand on Vuyo's shoulder. We'll get through this, Vuyo. We've faced worse, and we've come out better. Vuyo nodded. But the stress of the situation was making her feel like she couldn't handle it. She felt overwhelmed with fear and doubt for the rest of the day and couldn't get out of her fog. The next few days were terrible. As she tried to find her way along the unknown path ahead, each day brought a mix of worry and determination. During one of these tense afternoons, Vuyo's phone rang, and the screen showed an unknown number. She tried to keep her voice calm as she replied, Hello, this is Vuyo. Hi Vuyo. Hi, my name is Kofi said a warm, sincere voice on the other end. I'm the son of Baba Thaba the man you helped at the gas station. Vuyo's heart beat faster. Yes, I remember your dad. How does he feel? He is doing well because of how nice you are. He told me everything you did for him. I wanted to thank you in person and talk about something important. May I come see you? Kofi's request caught Vuyo off guard but he could tell that he meant it. You're welcome to come by, I'll text you my home number. Thank you, Vuyo, Kofi said. I'll be there soon and his tone showed that he was relieved. After hanging up the phone, Vuyo sent her address right away, feeling both interested and excited. She told Ama and Zuri that someone was coming over, and they cleaned up the small living room right away. Vuyo couldn't help but wonder what Kofi was there for as the minutes went by. Vuyo took a deep breath, opened the door, and the doorbell finally rang. A well-dressed guy in his early 40s stood there with a small bag in his hand. He smiled and put out his hand with a kind look in his eyes. Hi Vuyo, it's nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Kofi, he said. Vuyo told him, please come in, he shook his hand and moved out of the way to let him in. Kofi came in and met Ema and Zuri both with a warm welcome. The whole group sat down in the living room. And Kofi put the suitcase on the coffee table. At first, Kofi said, I wanted to thank you in person for what you did for my father, he's been having a hard time with Alzheimer's. And that day he was really lost, he really appreciated how kind you were. Vuyo smiled because what he said moved her. It was the very least I could do, I couldn't just push him away because he looked so upset. Kofi said, yes Vuyo, your kindness and understanding are very rare. My dad was moved to tears and so am I. It was my turn to return the money you gave him. He opened the bag and took out a big package. He gave Vio $10,000 and said, here it is Vuyo's eyes got really big in shock. $10,000? That's way too much. I helped him with a small amount. Kofi gave a smile. Think of it as our way of saying thank you. You've been so kind, and this is the little we can do to thank you. Vuyo paused because the kindness made him feel overwhelmed. I'm not sure what to say this is very kind of you, but I can't accept it. It's too much. She took the envelope from Kofi with care. Please, Vio, we won't give up. You helped my father when he needed it most. Let us help you now. Vio looked at Ama and Zuri, and they both gave him a positive nod. Even though it made her cry, she finally took the package. Thank you, Kofi, we really appreciate this. Then Kofi said, I need to tell you something else. The gas station where you used to work is now owned by me. Vio's eyes got bigger again, but this time they were shocked. Are you the owner? Yes, Kofi said in response. Until recently, I didn't know what happened to you. I learned about you from my dad, and I began to look into your situation. I'm so sorry for everything you've been through. Vuyo's feelings were all over the place. Thank you, Kofi. I have been trying to be strong for my family during this hard time. Kofi nodded, and his face looked serious. I get it, and I want to help I talked to Mr. Adebayo already. Because he trusts your honesty, he has been speaking up for you. We're trying to clear your name and get you back to the station. Vio had a strong feeling of hope. Thank you so much. Kofi, my family and I really value this job a lot. We'll make sure Vio gets what's right. You've been very brave and kind, and we need more people on our team like you, Kofi said with confidence in his voice. As the talk went on, Kofi told more about his dad's illness and the problems they were having. When Vuyo heard, she showed concern and offered her support and understanding. The visit began with a simple act of thanks and turned into a touching story telling and respect-filled exchange. 
Vuyo felt a deep sense of relief and hope when Kofi finally left. The bag of money saved her life, but what really made it better was the promise that she would get her job and name back. At the good news, she told Ama and Zuri. Their faces lit up with happiness and hope. That night, Vuyo thought about the strange turn of events as she lay in bed. She had been kind to a stranger, and now it had come back to help her financially and give her a chance to get her job and her pride back. But the most shocking part was still to come. Kofi called Vuyo again a few days after their first meeting. As always, his voice was warm and sincere. Vuyo, I need to talk to you about something important. Could we get together again? Of course, Kofi, when would work best for you? I'm interested, Vuyo answered. If that works for you, tomorrow morning, Kofi said, I'll stop by your place, that sounds good. That's when I'll see you, Vuyo agreed, feeling both excited and scared. The next morning, Kofi showed up on time. Vuyo invited him into their simple house, and they sat down in the sitting room. Because Ama and Zori knew how important the talk was, they let them have some space. Kofi started right away, without saying anything first. E. Vuyo, I'm really amazed by your character and how strong you've been during these tough times. The story about my dad and how you handled the situation at the gas station have made me believe in your honesty and commitment. Vuyo paid close attention. Not sure where this was going but thankful for his kind words. Kofi went on. I've been thinking at my gas station, we need someone like you to be in charge someone who not only knows what they're doing but also lives by the values we try to promote. It would be my pleasure to give you the job of boss. Vuyo's eyes got really big in shock. Boss? That's? I don't know what to say, Kofi. This offer came as a surprise. Kofi gave a smile. I know it's a lot to take in, but I'm sure you're the best person for the job you have shown a lot of strength and kindness. I really respect those traits in a boss. Vio's thoughts were going fast. It was both exciting and scary to think about taking on such a big role. Thank you, Kofi, sincerely. But are you sure? I've only worked for the company for a short time. Kofi gave a firm nod. Yes, Vio, I'm sure. What you do says a lot about who you are. I think you'll give the team a new point of view and a strong sense of right and wrong. Of course, I'll help you and teach you everything you need to know. Vio felt happy and thankful at the same time. Thank you, Kofi, I really appreciate this. I will do everything I can to meet your needs. They talked about the specifics of the job, Kofi's tasks, and the support system he had set up. It made Vio feel better about himself as they talked farther. She was ready to do it even though she knew it would be hard. Vio got Ama and Zuri together to tell them the news after Kofi left. Even though the kitchen is usually full of food and talking, it was quiet while they listened. Mama, you're going to be a boss, Wow Zuri yelled, her eyes wide with joy. Vuyo said yes, and a smile spread across her face. Yes, can you believe it? I've agreed to take the job that Kofi offered me. Ama's eyes got teary with pride, Vuyo. This is great news, you've had a lot of problems and worked really hard. You've earned this chance. Zuri gave her mom a tight hug. Mama, I'm so proud of you. Wow, this is amazing. As Vuyo hugged her daughter, she was overcome with emotion. Thank you both for always having faith in me without your help. This would not be possible. The next few days were a blur of planning and getting ready. Vuyo put all of her efforts into learning as much as she could about being a boss. She stayed at the gas station for a long time and watched Kofi and the other managers to learn as much as she could. Kofi's faith in her skills and his constant support gave her more confidence. Vuyo was nervous and excited on his first day as boss. She got there early, and the station was lit up by the soft morning sun. Kofi was there to meet her and give her a warm smile. He told Vuyo, You're going to do great remember to believe in yourself and the things that brought you here. Yes, Vuyo said, taking a big breath. Thank you, Kofi, I'm ready. Vuyo's exchanges with her team and customers throughout the day showed how naturally good a leader she is. She solved problems quickly and calmly, understood her team's worries, and made choices based on a clear moral compass. People who worked with her already respected her, and they respected her even more when they saw how well she handled her new job. One afternoon, a supply truck showed up late, which made the station backed up. Customers were getting impatient, which made things tense. 
Vio stepped in and made sure that the team was working together to handle the problem well. She talked to each customer one-on-one, -on -one, saying she was sorry for the wait and making sure their needs were met. When it was all over, the customers were no longer as angry, and her team was back on track. Kofi looked on from afar and nodded to show that he agreed. He then pulled Vuyo away. You did a great job with that I knew you were the right choice because of this. Vuyo felt like he had done something good. Thank you, Kofi, everyone worked together. Everyone worked together. As the weeks turned into months, Vuyo's effect on the gas station became clearer she started new programs to reach out to the community, made the workplace more cheerful, and put in place new processes to make things run more smoothly. Her team was always loyal to her because she was easy to talk to and fair. Things were also very different at home. Because her new job gave her financial security, Ama stopped selling their valuable keepsakes, and Zuri stopped worrying about school. It was lighter and happier in their simple home, where people laughed and hoped. As the family sat down to dinner one night, Alma raised her glass. To Vuyo, who is our rock of strength, you've shown us that we can get through anything if we work hard and are kind. Zuri added, and to fresh starts, Mama, we're so proud of you. Vuyo, her heart full of thanks, clinked her glass with theirs. Thank you both, it wasn't easy, but we made it through this journey together. May you reach many more important goals and have a wonderful future. The room was filled with a sense of togetherness and shared victory, which showed how strong they were and how much they supported each other. Vuyo knew that the future would still have problems, but she was ready for them because she had her family by her side and her ideals to help her. As Vuyo's amazing journey comes to an end, her story shows how important it is to keep going, be kind, and always be there for someone. Through her hard work and the love of those around her, Vuyo's life changed in big ways. It helps us remember that God always favors good people. There is a reason for everything that happens and people who stay true to their ideals and keep going will be happy. Thanks for following Vio's story and watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our station for more upbeat news and stories. Click the bell to make sure you never miss one of our new videos. Wait for more stories that will warm your heart.